He has repeatedly referred to pregnant women as hosts. When I use the term host, it's not meant to uh, degrade women. Uh, I, I actually went and Googled that and I went to Webster and I couldn't find a better term. The law also recognizes an embryo as a life. The so-called personhood bill would give embryos and fetuses all the rights and immunities of other citizens. An unborn baby would be counted in Colorado's criminal code. The fetus is now a legal person. Could have women facing the death penalty for having an abortion. The state of Georgia recently passed a law that said a woman who is six weeks pregnant or more can claim the fetus as a dependent and get a $3,000 break on her taxes. This may seem strange, or even like a harmless perk for women who are going through the burden of pregnancy, but this is part of something huge, something enslaving for women. This is part of a very serious move to establish fetuses and even fertilized eggs from the moment of conception as full people in the eyes of the law. And let's be very clear, fetuses are not people, not morally, not socially, and not scientifically. But this is not just a Georgia thing. This is the program of the Christian fascists for the whole country. We must resolve that we will not rest, we will not relent, until the sanctity of life is restored to the center of American law in every state in the nation. So what would it mean if this country legally classified fetuses and embryos as people. First of all, this would mean that all abortions in all circumstances would be criminalized. No exceptions for rape or incest, no matter how young a girl might be, no regard for women's own plans for their lives that would be shattered by forced motherhood, no regard for the decimated dreams, the foreclosed lives, and the patriarchal violence or the threat of such that would be heaped on all women everywhere. But that's not all. If fetuses were granted the legal rights of people, women who are pregnant will be denied life-saving care if that treatment might endanger the fetus. Let us never forget Savita Halepanavar of Ireland or Isabella Sajbor of Poland, both of whom died slow and agonizing, completely preventable deaths while having miscarriages in hospitals because those country's anti-abortion laws prevented the doctors from intervening. This was Savita Halapanova celebrating the Diwali Festival of Lights with her husband Praveen. They lived together in the Irish town of Galway. Now she's a newspaper headline. She became pregnant but at 17 weeks went into hospital in pain, miscarrying. The hospital wouldn't carry out an abortion. This is a Catholic country, a medic apparently told them. She died of blood poisoning in agony. Isabella was married for 10 years and was the mother of a nine-year-old child. She was expecting another. She was taken to this hospital in southern Poland in September with a serious complication to her pregnancy. Isabella described her worsening condition in a text message to her mother, saying, The baby weighs 485 grams. For now, because of the abortion law, I have to lie down. They can't do anything. They're going to wait until he dies or something else happens. Oh, and also, I could die of septic shock. Isabella did die of just that, and 24's observers team were informed by her family's lawyer that doctors decided not to terminate the pregnancy for fear of being held responsible for an illegal abortion. And even that is not all. Granting fetuses the full rights of people would mean that killing a fetus would be treated the same as killing an actual person. Women who terminate their pregnancies and those who help them, whether doctors and medical staff or loving families or anyone else, would be charged with murder and sent to prison. In places that allow the death penalty, they could be put to death. Think that sounds too extreme? That it can't happen here. Earlier this year, lawmakers in Louisiana pushed for a law that would have classified abortion as homicide and allowed women and those who helped them to be executed. A new bill moving through the Louisiana legislature would classify abortions as homicide. Women could be charged with murder if they abort their pregnancy. Of House Bill 813, which would redefine person as including a human being from the moment of fertilization. This would extend homicide laws to the unborn, meaning a woman who had an abortion could be charged with murder. Could have women facing the death penalty for having an abortion. 
And in Arizona, right now, the courts are deliberating over a law that would grant fertilized eggs the same rights, privileges, and immunities available to other persons. The 2021 statute essentially gives all legal rights to unborn children. And you can count on law enforcement to then start treating women who suffer from miscarriages as if they are murderers as well. Let's look at El Salvador. Women there are routinely arrested right out of the hospital and sent to prison, many of them languishing for decades for miscarriages and stillbirths. One high school rape survivor was sentenced to 30 years in prison after having a stillbirth in the bathroom. She had been repeatedly raped by a gang member and didn't even know she was pregnant. Yet she was charged on the grounds that failing to seek prenatal care amounted to murder. And on top of this, the court considered charging her mother as an accomplice as well. Again, don't say it cannot happen here. The group National Advocates for Pregnant Women has documented 1,000 331 arrests or detentions of women for crimes related to their pregnancies between 2006 and 2020. And all this was before the fall of Roe. Treating fetuses as full people in the eyes of the law has been the program of the Christian fascists for decades. And it is the logical conclusion of calling abortion murder for years and years and indoctrinating generations of religious fanatics and many people more broadly, with this lie. Recently, the New York Times did a podcast exposing the growing demand in the anti-abortion movement to treat women who get abortions as murderers. They showed how this is not just anti-abortion leaders, but women themselves who have had abortions, who have been indoctrinated and brainwashed with this view. Listen to this woman named Christine as she explains that she agrees she really ought to be prosecuted for murder and even put to death if that's what the law decides for the abortion she had as a teenager decades ago. Well, how do I feel about it? I feel it is extremely just and it's biblical. And it's fair. It's an equal measure. But I took a life. I should give my life. If they were to come back and I would right now, I would absolutely go to court and say, yeah, I'm a sinner. I did it. And if that was my punishment, I would take it. Again, this is the logical conclusion of spreading the lie that abortion is murder. And this logical conclusion has been aided and conceded to every time the Democrats and the so-called pro-choice leaders who are slavishly tied to these Democrats have insisted that abortion is tragic, that no one wants to have an abortion. We all want to reduce the number of abortions as if there is something morally wrong with abortion. In this way, they have ceded the moral high ground to those who wrongly equate abortion with the killing of babies and reduce women to incubators. We can support a woman's right to choose that makes abortion safe, legal, and rare and reduces the number of abortions. Our vision should be of an America where abortion is safe and legal, but rare. So let us work together to reduce the number of women seeking abortions. And as we Revcoms, led by Baba Vakin, have been emphasizing for years, fetuses are not babies. A fetus is a subordinate part of a woman's body. It has the potential to become a human being, but it is not a person until it is born and separate from the woman's body. Until that time, it is her body that is making it grow and develop. And it has no independent existence from her. She is the person. Second, abortion is not murder. There is nothing morally wrong with a woman terminating a pregnancy for whatever reason she chooses. And most important, women are not incubators. Women are full human beings who should never be made to feel bad or shamed. To say nothing of hunted down and locked up, or worse, for getting an abortion. For deciding for herself when and whether to have a child. Still, even at this late hour, even after Roe has been overturned, and even as the Christian fascists across this country are putting their foot on the accelerator towards fetal personhood, many Democratic Party strategists and so-called pro-choice leaders continue to downplay the danger we face. 
You ain't seen an insurrection yet. You keep on pushing our buttons, you low down, sorry compromisers. You God hating communist America, you'll find out what an insurrection is because we ain't playing your garbage. We ain't playing your mess. My Bible says that the church of the living God is an institution that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Bible says that we'll take it by force. That's what the Bible says. It is time to take the blinders off. Time to shed any remaining disbelief. The movement that fought for decades to shame and harass women getting abortions to terrorize and shut down abortion providers, to pack the courts and the government with women-hating theocrats, the movement that just won a huge victory by knocking down women's national right to abortion is hell-bent on going all the way. And they are not going to stop unless and until they are decisively defeated. This is going to take massive struggle, as is being fought for still by Rise Up for Abortion Rights. It's going to take struggle in the streets and massive resistance and struggle in the court of public opinion, calling out this women-hating fascist shit for what it is, fighting for the science and the truth that fetuses are not babies, that abortion is not murder, and women are not incubators, fighting for legal abortion on demand and without apology everywhere. And ask yourself, what kind of a system puts fascist fanatics in power who believe that a fertilized egg should have more rights than a fully developed woman? and then backs this up with the power of the state. It is a thoroughly and utterly outmoded and bankrupt system. As Bob Avakian has deeply analyzed in works available at Revcom.us, fully defeating these Christian fascists and winning the real and complete liberation of women is going to take a revolution. Overthrowing this whole system of capitalism, imperialism, and going to work in a new revolutionary society to break all the chains that bind women and put an end to all oppression based on gender and sexual orientation. Now is the time to get serious about waging this struggle. Now is the time to get into Bob Avakian and get with the Revcoms. Now is the time to unleash the fury of women as a mighty force for revolution.